All right, Peter, for today's first topic, should Joe Biden debate Donald Trump? What's your answer? Absolutely not. And let me give you a couple of reasons why. Uh, let's put aside that uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning website uh, fact checker has identified over 20,000 lies that the president has issued uh, since shortly before his inauguration. Let's, let's put aside that the Washington Post uh, is saying that he's now lying at a rate in excess of 20 times a week and setting new records at, uh, on each public uh, uh, appearance. Uh, put, put those aside and simply the announcement yesterday that the new campaign manager for Trump sees the debates as critical and that he wants to move them up because of early vote and that he's gonna ask for more of them. The Trump people understand that increasingly the president is toast and that the only way they can beat Joe Biden is by sticking him uh, with, with the moniker that he is not quite all there, he's not up for the job. And uh, uh, I, don't, I don't see that there is any reason for him to participate. And I don't think, I don't think it's, how do you debate someone who lies at a rate of 10 or 15 lies per hour? How do you debate them? Candy Crawley tried to fact check him four years ago and she was roundly criticized. But I'll, I'll, I'll wait for my esteemed brethren to uh, show me the light on this. Right. Mike McCurry, you former chair of the, uh, or co-chair of the Presidential Debate Commission, your response? Well, <clears throat> I think the American people now have just come to expect that there will be some kind of exchange between presidential candidates. And they would be surprised to hear that it would not happen. And if Biden refused to participate, I think that would reflect negatively on him and be probably a, a hardship politically that he would have to overcome. I think he would do perfectly fine in these debates. It's not necessary that they do all three that are scheduled or do more as Trump has proposed. You know, they could uh, have one or two regular encounters back and forth. But, you know, those the, these encounters at debates are illuminating because you see something interesting. You see something about the character of the candidates. You see how they respond under pressure. You see those moments in which something happens that really gives you some insight into who they are. And I think Biden would benefit from that. I think Trump is pretty good at knowing how to orchestrate those things. So, I mean, you know, I mean, Peter may be right. It would be to uh, Trump's advantage to have these things happen, but, uh, I just think the expectations are that we would have this and to reject uh, participating would be a big political negative. And I don't, I don't know that Biden needs to take on a big political negative like that. I want to ask one quick follow up, Mike, and then we'll go to Thurgood. I mean, okay, but these are presidential debates. Donald Trump has not treated this like the presidency. I mean, he, he hasn't, you know, you can go back to he hasn't released his tax returns like every other president has done. Peter walked well, through all of, of the ways he has just lied every day. And he doesn't respect any norms. So I'll just ask, why should we respect the norms of the presidential debate? Give him that opportunity when he hasn't respected any norms. Well, that, that is, would be Biden's challenge, to draw all of that information out to make it obvious to make the point. And that's one of the things these debates do. They give the candidate an opportunity to actually put it out there. Um, I, I don't think, I think uh, Peter mentioned the Candy Crowley incident. It's not the job of the moderator to interject and try to, you know, fact check the candidates. They have to come prepared to do that work themselves. And being able to do that and being able to confront your uh, opponent with hard information, good information, and confront lies, I mean, that it would be a good test for Joe Biden. And if he came up, and if he did well at that, then that would, uh, you know, enhance our confidence that he would be a good president. 
Thurgood politically beneficial or harmful if Biden were not to debate for whatever reason? Well, um, I, I agree with, with part of what Peter said and part of what Mike said. Um, and I, uh, but I tilt toward, toward Mike's view at the moment. I'd say I'd be comfortable with two or three debates. Um, what I would be most uncomfortable with is the Biden campaign pulling, plugs on, pulling the plug on a debate. Um, if, if the Trump people are demanding too much and things fall apart in the negotiations and there's no clear blameworthy party, I, I, that's, that's somewhat fine by me. But the other concern I have is that if you look at, uh, just for example, the viewership on former, uh, the late Congressman John Lewis's funeral and Fox's numbers dropping off during the coverage of the funeral, I think you, what, what, one thing we see from that is that the debates for Joe Biden could be the only and certainly the last best opportunity for him to address a significant number of Americans. Um, there may be some preparation issues, but he's got some superb staff with him. He's seasoned as a debater. Uh, Ron Klain in particular is, is very adept at preparing candidates for these debates, and he will give him the standard sort of three-part strategy. He will have a, a ready response for, for any narrator question. He will leave uh, a loose grenade on the floor for, for the president to have to deal with with every answer. And I think uh, there's enough time for them to prepare the books and for former vice president to prepare and be ready. I think they can even have him briefed up on the one thing I think would be the challenge would be if Biden, uh, if, if the president throws the vice president some questions that are intended to get under his skin, questions about family members, possible family um, side deals and that sort of thing. I, I, I'm comfortable with him debating. And it, it, if he shines, that's his best chance to get that point across to a lot of people. But, see, but here's, here's the point that I try to make with this guy. First of all, what makes you think he or his team will abide by any rules? I thought in the debate that he was supposed to stand behind his podium and not prowl Mrs. Clinton across the stage. Oh, he decided he wanted to prowl. There are no rules with this clown. And if, and if we continue to say, well, it's the presidential debate and we'll have two minutes to respond and you must stand it. I mean, please, uh, you know, this is, you know, we, we, we try to uh, normalize him by uh, allowing these, these kinds of things to go. And then, and then when, he, when he breaks the rules, when he acts like a jerk, uh, it appeals to his base and, uh, and undercuts uh, and, and, and just savages uh, our candidate. I think Biden is going to be strong enough to carry it. Well, let me let me just add, though, I I I, I don't entirely disagree, but I, I would I would say that at the very least, uh, following on what Peter said, there's a great opportunity for the DNC or some enterprising person to develop an app that you can turn on during the debate that does nothing but ding a bell every time the president lies or misstates something. Right. Uh, they, the CNN has already announced that they're going to do that. They're going to have a real-time fact check crawl at the bottom of the screen. So, well, Mike, I'll ask one one final question to you. If he were not to debate, if for for all of the legitimate reasons Peter says, does that not play though into the Trump narrative that it is Sleepy Joe, that he's a puppet to the left, that he can't even handle debate, and could this really hurt him and backfire because it plays into the Trump narrative? I mean, that, that's exactly correct. And I know that the Debates Commission, uh, I'm not on anymore, but was a participant there. They're, they're being very flexible in how they're trying to organize things. I think they may <clears throat> move away from doing a, you know, a big audience event with a lot of people clapping and cheering and move it more to a studio type event. Uh, to have a real debate, and then they, they pick the moderators. I think that, that'll be the big challenge, is to pick people 
you know, I'm, I'm sure Trump will throw up all kinds of objections with anyone who comes from quote unquote fake news, but uh, you know, they'll, they'll find someone good. Maybe they'll bring Jim Lair out of retirement, although he said he's done his last of these. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, they can structure something. And, and my point is, I think people w would like to see a direct confrontation between Biden and Trump. I mean, they want to see how each of the how they stand up against each other, and uh, I think the, I think you can learn a lot by just watching how the candidates perform in these circumstances. So, I, my prediction is that we'll have at least one, and you know, maybe two, and possibly three of these debates. Well, I, I hope the presidential <laughs> debate is as substantive as our debate between. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Mike. All right, well, with that, we'll, we'll leave this one here. Mike, thanks for joining uh, me, Thurgood, and Peter. Good seeing you, Mike. Good, good being with all of you. Mm -hmm.